having her breakfast too. <laughs> right, I was gonna do a video about this weird experience of like food paralysis, which I don't think I've spoken about in videos much before. Hopefully it'll be relatable. Like that experience where you go to choose or make or eat food and you get completely frozen to the spot because it's like you're so flooded with thoughts about the food that you can't actually act. And it can happen for so many reasons. Like maybe you're trying a new food or because of something else you've already eaten in the day or something else you're eating later that day. Or maybe because you've like gained weight or how your clothes are feeling or because of like what someone around you is eating. Whatever it is, you get so flooded with like worrying and thinking and questioning that you literally get glued to the spot. It's like there's a wall in front of you and you cannot just like reach out and do the thing that you're trying to do. And it's like you just really don't know what to do. You don't know what the right thing is to do because, well, in the moment, like the recovery action just feels so unbelievably wrong. It's not just like a fleeting thought that it's wrong. It is like, it feels like a full fact that like, no, that is a terrible thing to do. Like I used to say with every fiber of my being, I can feel that that is the wrong thing to do. And so because it felt so wrong, I would want to like be able to rationalize it and make sense of it before I did it because like it's really unnatural to choose a behavior that your whole body and your mind is telling you like, do not do that, that is the wrong thing to do. So I'd like want to feel okay about it. And I think, okay, if I can feel okay about this and make sense of it, then I'll do it. But honestly, it never happens like, and it won't, you will not feel okay. You won't be able to think yourself out of your thoughts. You won't be able to rationalize your way through it because even if you can make sense of one thought that you're getting and get over that, another thought will come and then you have to rationalize your way out of that and then another thought will come like the eating disorder just keeps throwing thoughts until one is good enough that it lands and you're like ah oh, yeah i shouldn't eat that <laughs> so in the end i found the best way wasn't to try and negotiate and rationalize and understand my thoughts it was just to block them and do opposite actions and i would hold a phrase in my head like either a reason for doing it or just like I used to say Bren baby's bones, which were like three of my big recovery goals. Or whatever works, like food is just food. Food doesn't have to be perfect. Different bodies, different paths, opposite actions. Feel shit and do it anyway. Whatever it is that works for you, just something that allows you to get the thoughts and be like, okay, just because I get the thoughts doesn't mean I'm gonna act on them. And even though it feels completely wrong to go against them and your body and brain is screaming at you, like, you just do it anyway. You block the thoughts and you use opposite actions. And it's so weird going against what feels completely right or wrong to do or whatever, but I don't know if it's like an element of blind faith almost, like you just have to do it. You have to literally go against everything your body and brain is telling you and do the opposite. Because if you're waiting for it to feel okay or comfortable, like you're going to be waiting forever because you go into food situations with your brain completely wired around your eating disorder thoughts and behavior. So your brain is already wired around avoiding that thing you've gone in to have. So in that moment, you're never gonna feel okay about it. Like even if you knew an hour ago you wanted to do it, or when you're away from the food, you can make sense of it and be like, oh no, this is what I need to do. Like when you come to face the food, your brain is wired around avoiding it. So of course it's not gonna feel like right or comfortable to have it. I guess the point of the process is to like rewire your brain so you do feel comfortable with having it, but the only way that will happen is exposure and through you actually having it like repeatedly again and again and again. So yeah, at some point it is break the cycle, block the thoughts, opposite actions, just totally go against everything that your body and brain is telling you to do. It's almost like the more wrong it feels, the more right it is. All right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna make breakfast. Oh, can you make it for me too? I was gonna have porridge, but I'll have this. Sweetheart. 
Bren and I are going away for a night to a hotel. It's actually a belated wedding present, so we're just getting packed up. But both of us are too lazy to pack what we actually need, so we're just packing everything. <laughs> and then we'll just choose what we need when we're there. Betty, are you coming? Yeah, put Betty in there. This is my current packing situation. Betty, what are you doing with all my packing? What are you doing, sweetheart? Yeah, literally, one night we're going for. What the hell? <laughs> so we're going to breakfast now. Like a buffet style food breakfast is a perfect example of food paralysis for me in the past. So Brian is out tonight, he's playing golf and I have just ordered a takeaway for myself and I am watching Gogglebox, I have a glass of wine and I've lit in my candles. <laughs> Which seems like such a small and mundane thing to be doing but that was like the dream for me in recovery that I could just get a takeaway on my own. But also I could know that I wanted to do it until I actually came to do it <laughs> and then it was the last thing in the world I wanted to do. And my head would just start going crazy with thoughts of like, but is a takeaway gonna be more calories than if you cooked dinner for yourself? Or have you got leftovers that need using up? Which one's gonna be cheaper? Which one's gonna be healthier? Like just this big equation and balance of like calories versus cost versus worth it. Oh, and that's it, there's no one here to see you. You're on your own. Like what's the point in doing it if it's just for you? Even though the original dream was that I could get a takeaway on my own just for me. So I'd be frozen to the spot just trying to decide whether or not to have a takeaway. And then once I decided to have it, I'd get my next bout of paralysis, which is, well, what do you have? And my head would fire up again with like, well, which is the best option? Would this option be less calories than this option? Well, maybe, but it's more expensive than that option. Maybe, oh, it's just this endless battle in my head and it would just freeze me to the spot. And it is so nice now to just be able to order something like, so I'm getting a burger. I just got that because I felt like having a burger. Like there wasn't a huge battle or negotiation about cost or calories or anything. Like I just kind of know that I fancy a burger. It wasn't particularly easy to get here. Like I've had to have takeaways on my own repeatedly and force myself to have like different types to get to the point where I can now kind of, I don't know, do it on my intuition a bit. And enjoy it as well, not do it as in like, I'm forcing myself to do it because I'm challenging myself. Like, it's genuinely nice to be able to just lie on the sofa and get a takeaway on my own. So I'd say in terms of like breaking that paralysis, the first thing which really helped me was to plan it and prepare it beforehand. So I knew what I was gonna order. I didn't try and choose it on the spot where my head was being flooded with all this calories versus cost versus whatever else bullshit. I guess just trying to minimize the decisions I had to make in the moment when like my ink disorder kicked in. And even if I came to it and my head started playing up with like, oh, maybe you just fancy the salad instead of the burger and chip. I'd kind of be like, no, because I knew that in the future I wanted to be able to have whatever, burger and chips. So I'd be like, right, if I want to be able to do that in the future, at some point I have to do it. So I'd basically be like, shut up brain. Like this is what I've come in planning to do. This is what I'm gonna do. Betty's here. Hey, doggy. <laughs> Betty. Okay, not having any of that. <laughs> Basically just trying to block the thoughts, not negotiate with each one because I'm never gonna win that battle. And then just do opposite actions. And I would keep a mantra in my head, which kind of like helped me to enforce that. Something like feel shit and do it anyway, or don't give up on what you want the most for what you want in the moment. Kind of anything that would connect me to that bigger picture of what I was trying to achieve and why I was doing this. So I could kind of remember that like, even though this feels shit now, I'm doing this because in the future, it's something I want to be able to do. And that was a really good mantra for me was live the life you ultimately want to live. Like not the life you want to live right now in this second, because that's going to be guided by your ink disorder, but the life you ultimately want to live. And then even if that feels wrong right now, it feels shit, awful, horrible, like that's okay. You can tolerate that. Like, like you're not choosing to have a takeaway now because it feels great right now. 
you're choosing to do it because down the line it's something you want to be able to do and then you just do it like despite it feeling awful despite it not making sense in your head despite it feeling completely wrong despite your whole body and brain telling you that it's wrong and even if you just do it with a kind of blind faith you just do it because like what you've been doing up until this point has it been working like maybe it's felt better in the moment but does it work long term um, is it what you want to still be doing in a year's time or in five years time and if it's not like at some point you have to do something different and that is never going to feel easy but yeah it is almost like the more wrong it feels the more right it is and honestly now i can't wait for my burger <laughs> i'm loving an evening in on my own watching some shit tv i'm gonna watch celebs go dating next <laughs> ah. <laughs> Betty, no. I randomly decided to start painting the furniture in our bedroom. It was really dark and I always thought about selling it and buying white stuff. And then I was like, hang on, I could actually just paint it myself. So I have no clue what I'm doing, but I just went to the hardware store, bought some paints and then started painting. It's actually a really nice thing to do. I just put a podcast on, you're kind of like in your own little world. Bertie came and sat with me and it kind of just engages like your whole mind and your hands and your body. So. I didn't feel like I was thinking too much when I was doing it. I kind of wish I'd used it as a like distraction technique in recovery actually. Like if I was feeling guilty after having eaten or anxious or something like that, like using painting, yeah, as a distraction, I think would have been really good. In the same way that puzzles are or arts and crafts, like anything that uses like your brain and your hands, I feel like that works really well for distraction. I wanted to go back to the like buffet breakfast that we had in the hotel because I didn't really talk about it but in my recovery I like buffet style any sort of meal even like going to a friend's house for like a barbecue where there's food out and stuff just gave me so much fear and anxiety and sent me into like crazy panic like I have been through all sorts of crazy around buffet food I think I just freaked out because like there was so much choice and I didn't know how the food was prepared I didn't know how many calories was in it and just yeah the turmoil it caused me like to the point where we'd go on holiday and the buffet would be more memorable for me than the actual holiday and then it kind of changed during my recovery like as I started letting myself eat more foods and introducing foods back into my diet I like wanted everything all the time so being faced with all of this food i would kind of like go into this weird panic of just like grabbing everything and i'd end up with a plate with nothing that matched you have like yogurt next to lasagna next to a pancake <laughs> i kind of just do it all in this panic and then like after the breakfast i would be like what just happened and then i'd be really like disappointed in myself or like feel really guilty about it feel like i'd eaten too much or then want to restrict to make up for it or just not be able to like engage with other people or enjoy the trip we were on because all I was thinking about was like, what the fuck did I eat for breakfast? And I don't have that now. And I think the way that I got through it was kind of just allowing the craziness. I tried to see it from my body's point of view. Like, of course I'm going crazy around all this food. Like I haven't been allowed it for so long and now I am and there's this huge deficit to fill and it won't last forever as long as my body does get what it wants and it does get to try all these foods and then like eventually the novelty will wear off. But it's totally understandable that I'd kind of feel this like crazy around food after a period of restriction. Anybody else who'd been through my experiences, like what I'd been through with food, would also feel crazy around food. So I kind of just tried to trust it, I think, and like 
trust my body, see it from my body's point of view, and that to get to a place of calm, and I guess almost like indifference to the food, I'd have to like go through the crazy to get there. And now I feel like I can like have a couple of things at breakfast. I like can know what I want, choose it, have it, and then I'm okay. And then I just move on with my day and don't think about that breakfast again. And I'm not left thinking like, oh my God, I should have had pancakes, I missed my chance because like I can have pancakes tomorrow or I've had them recently. Like I know what pancakes taste like. I'm not left thinking like, oh my God, it's more than usual, like, yeah, I'm on holiday, it's fine. Like, this is what I want to be able to do. I want to join in with people on holiday and be able to have more than usual and not feel, like, controlled by this need to, like, compensate afterwards or before. I'm also not trying to take lunch from the breakfast buffet. And maybe that's quite a privileged thing to say, but it's not good for my mental health to do stuff like that. Like, for me to obsess and control over our food throughout the day, and not just mine, other people's too, like... Bren doesn't want to eat a warm yogurt for lunch that I pinched from breakfast or like a roll wrapped up in a napkin, you know, like it's just not something I can do. Yeah, I just don't feel as crazy around food anymore. It's not the most monumental part of my day. It's not the most exciting thing that happens in my day. And like at that breakfast when we we're in the hotel, I kind of knew I wanted eggs going in like I that's what I fancied. And sometimes I think that can help like if you are in that state where you either get paralyzed around all the choice of food or crazy around it, like you want all the food, just going in with a bit of a plan, like thinking it through before you get in the position where you're gonna get stuck. And just don't be hard on yourself as well. Like if you do wanna try things or whatever, like look at it from your body's point of view. Of course you do. Anybody would if they'd been through what you've been through with food. And if you like understand it and allow it, like it will pass, food will lose its novelty. But it's when you like, fight it and try and compensate and maintain your restriction and control like that's when you stay trapped right look at beyonce i like made the pets little beds so that they could watch me whilst i do my painting hello darling she's watching bren playing his golf i'd also kind of planned to talk about food shopping in this video so i feel like that can be such a big source of paralysis you know like going to a supermarket and actually buying what you're intended to buy and not just like wandering up and down the aisles or picking up food and looking at the packets, having a list, sticking to your list, that kind of thing. But I've kind of run out of time. So I'll maybe do that in another video if people wanted to hear about that. <laughs> Lots of love until then.